What does eating right mean to you? How does your diet affect how you feel and think? Hear what one expert has to say next on Connecting Our Community. Please stay tuned. Hi, I'm Pat Shoemaker. Welcome to Connecting Our Community. Our guest tonight is Joel Bressler. He's a retired pharmacist, a nutritionist, and he's an author of Essentials of Nutrition, Good Nutrition versus Malnutrition, which is his second book. Joel believes that doctors should use the benefits that nutrition has to offer to prevent all kinds of illness, and that that would be the true meaning of health care. In his book, he explores the positive and negative aspects of nutrition, providing readers with a comprehensive guideline on how to take care of their health. Welcome, Joel. First of all, how long ha um, were you a pharmacist? 33 years. 33 years. And you're in remarkably good shape. May I ask how old you are? 82. Oh, you're, you're obviously practicing what you've written in your books. So, I try. Yeah. <laughs> this is your second book, um, and you wrote the first book, 1986. And what was that about? Same thing? Same thing. And so what has changed for you since 1986 that you felt you needed to write a second book? My ideas on uh, nutrition as a healing agent and as an adjunct to uh, the way doctors treat their patients. And what did you put in the first book? Did you not think that, um, that nutrition played a part Yes, I did, ago. but I, I, in the second book, I stepped further a, out to uh, use what I always felt that there was, well, for example, uh, in the treatment of cancer, I always felt that the, the doctors were not quite doing any the, the things to help the disease by giving chemo chemotherapy and radiation and, and uh, surgery. Uh, here I go into it in much greater detail. Mm. So do you think that those things were are wrong treatments or do you just think that there's something that needs to be done in addition to? Uh, I feel that they are wrong. Oh, okay, why? Okay, uh, on chapter 14, the, the chapter on cancer, the uh, body develops from a a sperm and an egg, and during the first month of prenatal development, the uh, the body rapidly multiplies the the, uh, uh, the the cells multiply, and then at at the end of the first month of life, miraculously, they uh, stop multiplying rapidly and they differentiate. So. Uh, I'll tell you, uh, I'll tell the, the readers that a, a physician back in 1896 by the name of Dr. John Beard uh, uh, discovered, he, he, he questioned it. He was a, a, a biologist, but he, was a, he, he specialized in anatomy and physiology, and he discovered that there was an organ in the body that changed the development from uh, rapid multiplication to uh, uh, differentiation where you have the, the heart developing and the, and the lungs and the bones and every, every, every other part of the body. Uh, and it took time to do that. In fact, that's why they needed the, nine, the, the full nine months mm. for, for normal development. Yeah not just to annoy women so that we're pregnant for nine months, I that's guess. Right. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. So, so how does that affect why cancer isn't treated A Very good correctly? question. Thank you. This <laughs> organ uh, that I'm referring to was, was the pancreas. And the pancreas is in that development from the uh, esophagus to the stomach and to the duodenum and everywhere else. And uh, just before the, the liver, the, the food travels, it, it uh, uses pancreatic enzymes to digest protein, and also the proteolytic enzymes that are manufactured in there travel all around the body, and they protect the, uh, s the body from this rapid multiplication of the cells again. 
So consequently, as long as a the pancreas is healthy, you have not only protection against cancer, but you also have protection against diabetes. Hmm. There are two sets of, of, of uh, uh, enzymes in the, in the uh, pancreas. One is the uh, insulin, and the other one is uh, the pancreolytic enzymes. And they're absolutely necessary, and when we eat wrong, uh, they eventually uh, don't function, and you have diabetes, and you have cancer, for, mm. just to name two. Yeah. So this was discovered in 1896 by, uh, by Dr. John Beard. Yeah. And then what happened? Why didn't his findings okay. win him the Nobel Prize or whatever would have yes, happened? Yes, that's a good question. <laughs> and the answer is that in 1911 he wrote a book. And uh, the book was rejected by what we call orthodox medicine. Mm. And uh, people who uh, try to think of different other ways to help people have been rejected by orthodox medicine to the, point, to the extent that uh, the only accepted method is chemotherapy and radiation and, and surgery. So there are a lot of um, Western medicine, Eastern medicine, holistic. There are a lot of different countries in the world, obviously, that practice medicine differently than the United States. Was his teaching, was his book, was his theory tested anywhere other than the United States? Not or? to my knowledge. OK. And so what happened to that theory, and how did it how did you find it? How did it pop up again? Well, he died at about 1920, and uh, knowing that his, his dream w was lost. Uh, then in about 1926, there was a fellow by the name of uh, uh, Max Gerson, who also came up with the idea that, that diet has a tremendous amount to, to play in, di in many di mm. different diseases. He was able to cure. 95% uh, of the people who went to their doctors and were, uh, after they finished treating him, he were was able better? to cure 95%, uh, 50% of the 95% of the, of the people who, who uh, uh, went to. Yeah. So, I mean, those are incredible numbers. Yes. Or percentages, even, even if it was, he saw 10 people and he cured five of them. Yeah. That's pretty incredible. Why wasn't any of this documented or spread the word or uh, popular? Again, again the orthodox, those who ran orthodox medicine saw to it that, that, that their methods would not be used. Or so allowed. do you think that it was a concerted effort by doctors to or whoever to squash this because they didn't believe it, or because they thought it would ruin their business, or yes, all of the above. <laughs> so, why is it resurfacing now? How did you come up with finding it again? And is there documentation that's been done? Has anybody done any recent research other than you? Uh, no. Oh. <laughs> okay, well, that's a quick answer. Okay. <laughs> when I was a pharmacist, I met different people. For example, a man walked in one day and he says, What can you do? Do you know anything that will, will cure ALS, Lou Gehrig's mm -hmm. disease? And I said, Well, according to medicine, it's incurable, and all I can do is just relieve the symptoms. But uh, in my practice as a pharmacist, I have helped people. Uh, be, if they listen to my nutritional advice, uh, to relieve their symptoms. And I said, do you drink coffee? And the man said, yeah, I drink a pot a day. Yikes. I says, well, if your outcome of your disease depended upon it, could you give up coffee? And I know there's lots of people who, who absolutely will never give up coffee right. or tea or the other yeah. things. The, uh, anyhow, I recommended some vitamins and minerals and combinations, and he went home. And a month later, he came back and he says, "Well, 
my, I just went back to my doctor, who is an endocrinologist, and, and uh, he says, I'm not getting any worse. Well, this is remarkable because yeah. all the people I know, which I don't know too many of yeah. them, uh, don't get better. They get progressively downhill. Yeah. So uh, the, um, we continued month after month after month, and the doctor says, hmm, you seem to be getting better than worse. Wow. After one year, the doctor said, I'm discharging you because I don't see a, a trace of ALS in your body. I must have made a mistake in diagnosis. Oh, my gosh. And he discharged him. Wow. That's incredible. And I can... And yeah, I'm sorry, I have to stop you there because we have to go for a break. Right. But please come back after the break. We have a lot more to discuss, a lot more ideas that are going to blow your mind. <laughs> so please come back after our break. We'll be here waiting for you. <laughs> when you donate goods in response to an international disaster, it's expensive. They have to cross the sea, pass through customs, be inspected, sorted, then finally delivered. And often they arrive too late to help, making your good intentions feel a little empty. There is a better way. Cash donations are fast, simple, and allow professional relief workers to purchase supplies close at hand. Cash is best. Learn more at CIDI.org. It's our duty to serve veterans and military families who serve their country in the most difficult ways imaginable. Together, we can say thank you in so many ways. Small acts of kindness mean more than anything. With our support, veterans and military families can face even the most difficult challenges. Let's honor their service with ours. I'm Pat Shoemaker, and please welcome back to Connecting Our Community. Our guest this evening is Joel Bressler, and we're talking about nutrition and some of the interesting um, ideas and different ideas. And um, Joel, you wanted to read a paragraph from your book. Yeah, this is chapter two, entitled Hoodwinked. And I write, to me, since the Holocaust, the destruction of the Twin Towers, the ISIS beheadings, the mass murders in schools, restaurants, and movie theaters, and nightclubs, to this, to this very day it's happening, all caused by mentally ill people who had guns. Nothing is sadder than hearing about a 40-year-old doctor dying of a heart attack, his wife dying of breast cancer, his son committing suicide from an overdose of drugs, and his own parents of still other preventable diseases. Somehow I feel that the doctor should have been trained to detect these diseases and prevent their deaths. And that sort of sums up what your thoughts Ex are and what your book exactly. is about. Um, very depressing, but we'll get on to <laughs> other also parts of it. To show you. Yeah. Um, so in addition to the nutrition part of it, there's a huge component of exercise that you believe in very strongly, correct? Yes, I okay. devoted a whole chapter to it chapter five, yeah. and I had a young lady t uh, being uh, doing the exercises uh, by a photographer in this area. Ah, well, there's, um, I hope people at home are, are watching the video that we shot of you doing some of your exercises. Again, you're 82 years old and still doing these stretches and squats and things like that that I know people of my age, which is not that young, but and other people as well who are having a problem with. So how do you stay limber? How do you uh, stop your knees from All right. The hurting? point is that when I get out of bed in the morning, I immediately do the exercises. There are uh, standing up exercises, uh, bending and twisting and turning, so that every, ex every part of the body uh, is 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 um, um, exercised, yeah. and then I have lying down exercises, and I bring my my uh, uh, legs up and uh, stand up that way, yeah. and then I have exercises against the wall, where I go forward first one leg and all that. To to you know, th these are all to sum it up, they're to exercise every part of the body. And is this a program that you came up with yourself? Yes. 
because it looks, some of the stretches I noticed or movements almost look like Pilates or um, um, Tai Chi, not Tai Chi. Is it Tai Chi, the sort of stretching, yeah. moving, yeah, slow sure. motions? So were you influenced by those types uh, of not, programs? Not particularly. Oh. <laughs> just, I go to the chiropractor once a month and he presses on my back and yeah. I, I'm in great shape until the next yeah. Uh, no, yeah, I month. mean, again, you're eight, I don't mean to keep saying this, but you're 82 years old and you're moving so well. I, it's just an incredible thing. How long have you been doing those exercises? Oh, I'd say uh, 15 years. Wow. And before that, did you do any exercising or did well, you? Well, just start? walking and yeah. doing that. Yeah. There are two parts of exercise, according to me. Sleeping One and is, oh. no. <laughs> One is is uh, getting up in the morning and doing these stretch exercises. They're very important. And then they are followed by the aerobic exercises, walking or swimming or other things like that. I don't believe in the uh, terrible uh, punishment that, that people do when they, when they run for 36 miles or whatever. I just, yeah. I, I don't believe that the body needs that. Yeah. And that's why I, I exercise according to, so that anybody can, uh, can do these exercises. Yeah. I, I think you're right. I think the gentle exercises are probably better and you can certainly do them longer because if you punish your body, your body's not going to want to do that again. That's right. <laughs> well, yeah, that's, that's a really good way to do it. So getting back to the nutrition part of it. So you exercise on a regular basis and then you eat right, I would yes. presume. And what do you consider eating right? Very good question. <laughs> uh, chapter three devotes, is devoted to all the different types of foods. For example, beans, uh, protein, carbohydrates, uh, fats. Uh, and do you think that, that because all the fad diets of you should eliminate this or you should eliminate that, do you go along with those thoughts of eliminating one whole group of foods from your diet, or do you think? Okay, uh, let me let me continue one okay, for one sorry. second. Chapter four, which is followed by uh, f from chapter three, chapter three tells you what foods and everything you can eat. Chapter four tells you what foods or substances sh you should never oh. eat or do. Okay. And among them are caffeine, which is from uh, which which is a sub a subgroup of uh, benzene, of benzene derivatives. Uh, caffeine, for example, coffee, tea, soft drinks, uh, chocolate is in that group even though it's not exactly that molecule, but it's close enough. It's all part of the uh, xanthine derivatives. The studies that I've seen, especially recently, say that chocolate, dark chocolate, is good for you. That the and they'll cocoa. tell you that, that coffee is good for you, too. Right, it's I've seen that as well. Except that, that they're, they're lies. Oh. And they are, the substances that they have in the molecules uh, are what I call slow poisons. And it, because the, the fact that they don't develop where doctors can, can spot them, until between 12 and 20 years uh, uh, after you have started them. So if, if you start drinking coffee at, at the age of uh, 12, then within 30, at the age of 32, you may have developed uh, cancer. Mm. And have there been studies to um, back up that proposal or that claim? Or is there anything that well, they're not telling us because the coffee manufacturers would go exactly, out of business? Exactly, <laughs> exactly. I discussed that in chapter two. Uh, there any backup information about that? Is there anybody who's working on trying to resolve that? Oh or? yes, oh yes. There are many groups all over the country that yeah. uh, are trying to do that. But, but alas, they're fighting the, be the big people, the, yeah. the one percent of the population. Yeah, huh. it, it just seems like it's somebody would have yeah, somebody would have found out something different after all But they're all afraid these years. to open their mouths because medicine will tell you, where's your facts? Where's your proof? And, and it's a tragedy. Okay. Do you find that people are becoming um, vegans or vegetarians or whatever more these days? And is that, do you think, changing the way health is it going? It is. 
but not lo not not uh, fast enough for uh. me. <laughs> I really want to get get everybody well uh, rapidly. Yeah, and what it, because we don't have very much time left. But what would be the one thing that you would suggest to people if there's one thing you can do today that will help you to live longer, healthier, better? Read well, chapter that will help three, you. <laughs> four, and oh no, it'll help them too. <laughs> chapter three, four, and five, and then the last 12 chapters or 10 chapters of the book deal with specific diseases, arthritis, diabetes, cancer, uh, heart disease, uh, stroke, uh, male and female diseases, uh, all, all those things, and it's worthwhile. And the last chapter I devote to recommending to doctors and to educators the idea of, of uh, changing their style of, of, of uh, taking care of patients and, and students and their parents. And it's worth while just to just to read that that last chapter and have you spoken to doctors or medical organizations have they expressed any interest in talking to you or hearing your thoughts after the first uh, book in I published in 1986 I spoke to many doctors and they said we cannot book the system um, and that and uh, alas oh, you have terrible. we have 30 seconds okay these are the vitamins and minerals and substances that I take on a daily basis with breakfast. This and the salt palmetto. Okay. This here, I, uh, chelated mineral, uh, magnesium and calcium, and either the acidophilus or the probiotic uh, are very important to take with supper. And there are reasons why, which I cannot go into now, as to why uh, you have to separate the, the two groups. And royal jelly, for a person who has arthritis or anything that involves the adrenal gland, adrenal medulla and the adrenal uh, cortex, uh, royal jelly helps to restore the adrenal gland uh, uh, so that the people can get over arthritis without having to continue the rest of their lives taking pain pills, which really don't work, and, and all that. And it's delicious mixed with royal peanut butter, I'm sure, but <laughs> it's, it's I'm just kidding. royal jelly and honey. <laughs> Unfortunately, we've come to the end of our show, but I do want to thank you all for joining us, and for more information about Joel's book, you can contact him directly at joelbressler at verizon.net. That's Joel Bressler at Verizon.net. You can also go to the Connecting Our Community blog on the mymcmedia.org website. And I want to thank you again, Joel, for being with us. It was very interesting. Okay. And thank you all for watching. And it's in we'll bookstores all over the country. <laughs> One last plug to buy the book. Yes. And please join us next time on Connecting Our Community. Have a wonderful day, a healthy day. Thank you.